This problem has a little bit of everything. Let's get started. We can start by noticing that a u substitution is not going to work. You'll also notice that our integrand doesn't have the form of any of these trig substitutions. So one of our only options to start this problem is algebra. We can factor an x squared underneath the radical. Taking a square root of that x squared will give us the absolute value of x. As in all of the previous videos in this section, we're just going to assume that x is positive. That lets us get rid of our absolute value sign. So at this point, again, notice that a u substitution isn't going to work. And also notice that we still don't have any of the forms, at least not exactly, that you might expect in a trig substitution problem. All of our trig substitution forms have x squares in them, and we have an x to the fourth. So to me, that suggests that maybe we can make a substitution u equals x squared. The idea behind that being that this term then will turn into a u squared which will look more like the forms over here. If we make all of those substitutions, let's see what we're left with. Now here's a line I'm uncomfortable with. Mixing u's and x's is never a good idea. This two here is in the denominator, so I'm gonna bring it outside and call it a one half. Both of these x's are in the denominator, so we can rewrite this integral in this way. Now I'm still uncomfortable because we still have u's and x's in the same integral, but notice now that this x squared in the denominator can be rewritten as a u. That gives us an integral with all u's in it, and I'm starting to feel a little bit better about this. Now looking back at our list of forms for trig substitutions and making a very small edit, we notice that what we have here is this form with a equals 1. So we're going to make the substitution u equals secant theta. Taking a derivative of that then gives us secant tangent. Let's make all of those substitutions and see what integral we end up with. Now what's about to happen is pretty sweet. Remember that secant squared theta minus 1 is just tangent squared theta. Taking a square root of that tangent squared then gives us, and as always in all of these problems, technically we have an absolute value here. Again, we're still dealing with indefinite integrals. We're going to go ahead and assume that tangent theta is positive. That allows us to get rid of these absolute values and check out what we're left with. Everything cancels and we just get an integral of d theta. So cool, our answer is 1 half theta plus c, but we need to get rid of that theta. We need to look back at what substitution we made. Our theta substitution was this right here, and if we take an inverse secant of both sides, we get that theta equals the inverse secant of u. And looking all the way back to the beginning of this problem, you'll remember that u was x squared. So our final answer is going to be 1 half times the inverse secant of x squared plus c. That was pretty cool. And all right, I'm going to zoom out on that so we can look back at all the work that we just did there. We did some algebra, we did a u substitution, and then we did a trig substitution. That was pretty good stuff. I'll see you guys in the next one.